Hello everybody and welcome back to Focus Fire with Lothans. I of course am Lothans. Over there is Hacksaw, the team captain for the competitive team Just Shoot Him and frontline specialist Hacksaw. How you doing my friend? I'm doing awesome Lothans. How are you today man? Doing great, doing great. So uh, we brought you on here. You're sitting in the hot seat. You're the priority target and I can't wait to hear some of these answers. So let's get it going. I mean right off the bat we're here to get to know you. What is okay. your real first name? It is Vladimir. I'm a Russian descent, so Vladimir is my name. Actually, no, it's Andrew. <laughs> Andrew is the first name. Or maybe it's Bob. No, but it's actually Andrew. Who knows? So. You might be William Philip. I don't know. That could be. I don't know. But it is Andrew, as far as you know. So, yes, let's go with that. Let's go with that. And uh, where is Vladimir, Andrew, Bob, William Philip from? Well, I am what they call a military brat. My dad was in the Army, so I lived all over these United States. Uh, and then after he got out of the Army, he became a corporate flunky, maybe a hitman, I don't know. But that moved him around just as much, uh, so I've seen all the country. Mostly lived in the northeastern region. Um, thankfully, I've never lived in the Midwest. God bless those people. Um, but yeah, I've lived east coast, west coast, um, northwest. I'm now in the southeast. I've spent time in Saudi Arabia, Korea, uh, traveled over Europe, a little bit of Mexico here and there. So wow, but all yeah. over for a lot sure. of different things. It's been a, it's been quite a good life, so I can't complain. Absolutely, sounds exciting. I mean, I've been in this little small town most of my life. I got out for a little bit, and then I came right mm -hmm. back. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it goes. Sure. But uh, so initially, you're a gamer obviously how did you find out about atlas reactor uh it was a little facebook ad that kept popping up because the game that i was playing most uh substantially prior to playing this was dota 2 and i guess because i have liked a bunch of dota 2 stuff on facebook uh you get the related ads essentially and the ad was the <clears throat> i believe it was called dota 2 meets atlas or no it was dota 2 meets xcom was the tagline <laughs> and that seemed interesting to me because i've also played xcom i've played it both in its current incarnation xcom the recent release xcom 2 i even played the original xcom way back in the day yeah. even with terror from the deep i mean we go <laughs> way back from a turn-based perspective in my history so uh, that was the original sighting uh, so to speak. So I did a little research here and there. I signed up for an email list and then I got in, I believe it was Alpha Sneak Peek was the first time I touched the game. And, you know, it's one of those things where you don't know what you're doing initially, but you've got that immediate vibe where you're like, this is definitely my cup of tea. And it just kind of snowballed from there. So that's wow. about it. That's how I got here. Very cool. And what is your favorite freelancer within the game? And of course, why? Well, I've told many people that Pup is my spirit animal. Uh, <laughs> if I was to be, you know, reincarnated as anything, I think it'd be a, a big pupper. And it's because Pup is just in your face one moment. And then he's out of there, nice and quiet and stealthy in the next, uh, as is the case with most people that do any kind of radio or theater or public figures. You know, they can turn it on really quickly if they need to, like pouncing from 10 squares away in your face. Or, you know, when it's downtime, you just want to be quiet. Just hang out, you know, chew on a bone a little bit, relax. So that is definitely me, and uh, Pup represents that in the game. So I love that Pupper. It's an excellent explanation. I love it. And kind of going back to your history, you mentioned XCOM was uh, a lot of your history back in the day. Mm -hmm. When did you actually first start gaming? And if you recall, what game was it? So I've told this story um, in many different gaming communities, and it's always funny to me to just think back about it. So when I was a young lad many years ago, uh, I was reading books in the basement quite often, was what I'd spend my time doing. And uh, one of those series of books were the old original Conan adventures. 
Uh, yes, folks, if you don't know, Conan was a novel before it was a movie. Check it out. Those <laughs> books are great. And uh, in one of the Conan novels, in the back of it, there was a single-page print ad for a game called Duel Masters. Now, what the hell is Duel Masters? Well, Duel Masters... No, you know, tuck yourselves in, kids, because this is exciting stuff. <laughs> it was a play-by-mail gladiatorial combat game. Wow. Now, these kids are probably asking themselves, what the hell is play-by-mail? <laughs> so play-by-mail means, you know, talk about edge-of-your-seat excitement. You fill out what is basically the equivalent of a spreadsheet for your character um there was a i think a 12 round timer and you input your actions uh for each of the 12 rounds are we drawing some consistencies here some similarities here and uh <laughs> you have to basically plan out the entire fight and then you pick your fighter which has a style and the style has strengths and weaknesses certain abilities that you might use during phases of the fight it's almost as if I was made for AR, but hey, <laughs> anyway, you'd mail it in to like some place. What's that place where they used to get all the catalogs in Colorado? That it was like, it was one of those places, but uh, some random location in the United States. You'd mail it in, and you know, all your fights would be processed on some huge computer. Like, you know, this is, I don't even know when, probably early 90s. So this computer was probably like a data Massive. warehouse computer, yeah. you know, like a big. <laughs> Put the, the servers on the fritz again, you know. It's like this <laughs> outbuilding somewhere. And uh, and then about two weeks later, they would mail you the results, which were, you know, your inputs versus your opponent's inputs. And it creates this little computer-generated narrative of what the results were. And, you know, that was super cool to me. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And uh, <clears throat> then from that, doing that for a while, I don't know, months or maybe a year or two, we um, eventually... Duel Masters got so big that we had to have a Duel Masters convention. And, you know, the, the technology had evolved at that point where you could put a computer, like, on a table instead of, like, in a warehouse. So what you'd do is you'd go to a hotel room or you'd go to a hotel ballroom or something like that. They'd have the Duel Masters server set up, and you guys would sit around the table and you'd fill out forms together. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, these fights are going to be amazing. And instead of two weeks, they processed them in like two hours. Wow. And then you got live Big step-ups. Oh, yeah. But what really got me was at one of those conventions that my dad took me to, because I was like 12 at the time or something, there was guys playing this game on the tables between rounds while the computers were processing the data. They were playing this little game called Magic. Oh. Have you heard of it? I, I've heard inklings. Oh, yeah. Whispers. So I got blown into the magic whirlwind uh, and became a pretty competitive magic gamer back in the day. Started running tournaments. Um, I mean, I was running competitive magic tournaments at my local mall when malls were still a thing as like a 15-year-old kid. Like I had... You know, I made a deal with this local comic shop that was in the mall. I was like, yeah, you know, you guys get the tables. I'll set up everything. I'll do registration, yada, yada, yada. You guys can pay me in product. You know, so I was quite, you know, innovative because the local community didn't have any of that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from Magic to miniatures games, uh, mostly Warhammer 40,000. Uh, eventually, later in life, got into other miniatures games. Uh, I... Some people have already found out that I'm a big part of the uh, War Machine and Hordes community, which is where I was previously to, you know, kids. I was a lot more time available. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, was a big part of that game. But I've been all over, man. I did poker for a while. You know, you name it. I've been there. A lot of gaming. Right on. So this whole thing about thinking out your moves ahead of time is just, I mean, you've been doing that since forever ago. I mean, not to, you know, throw mud in your eye, but you're older than dirt. So, you know, we both know that. Been oh, doing yes. This for a while. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> I am a 40 year old man. I don't know if I look at it or not. Look at this. What do you guys think? Hey, you know? hey yeah, what are you doing over there? All right. But yeah, so, um, yeah, it's been kind of second nature to me. And even in the tabletop games that I play uh, in poker, uh, shout out to Avaki, who you may or may not know is a 
full-time poker player in his in his spare time he plays ar but he's a poker player so we've talked about that a lot really um, interesting and you know every game that i've ever played the thinking ahead uh, dynamic is something that has been interesting to me i've never been a big fan of just like the real-time strategy games although there is like an overall strategy it's mostly focused on clicking a lot uh, which is why dota was kind of an anomaly for me but there is grand strategy in the game but it's also you know kind of boils down to moment to moment type stuff so oh, it's yeah, probably why sure. i'm very good at it <laughs> um but yeah, thinking ahead is is definitely something that I relish in games. All right, that was amazing. So if you had to choose one thing, whether it be a person, a place, or a thing, what would that thing be and why? So in life, there are moments where just true happiness just kind of emanates, right? And I don't know if you have kids or not, but... That's it for me, right? So my two daughters, when they come up to me and they go, you know, Dad, I want to kill that monster with a big sword and I would stab him right in the eye. And I'm like, you can't do that. That's violence and we don't advocate violence. And then into my own heart, I'm like, I have raised a warrior. <laughs> so that's my favorite thing. I mean, there's little stuff here and there, but... You know, when you see your chromosomes taking hold in the future uh, in the form of a cool little kid who's going to, like, wreck some dudes, it's going to be awesome. That is my favorite thing. So thanks to my wife. Shout out to all that cool family stuff. It's, it's very fun. Right on. Now, a little bit more towards yourself here. The word hacksaw, which is your gamer tag in Atlas Reactor. Mm -hmm. describes sort of a very violent woodcutting tool. Does that actually describe your personality, or where did that name come from? Uh, no, I myself am very diplomatic. I try to be nice uh, all the time. I, just, I can count the times I've been angry, like like visibly angry in my life on one hand. Um, so I'm a very relaxed type of person. So that story is another one I've shared in other communities, but I'll do it again here. Uh, essentially, when I went to school for college, uh, we were close to New York City, and we would spend our weekends uh, carousing in uh, the downtown area. So one of these fateful evenings, we were super drunk. Uh, and As you would be. Yes, exactly. I mean, we would drink like a fifth of whiskey or something like that before we even went to the bar. So <laughs> it, was, it was not intelligent gaming. Let's ah, put it that days. way. Oh, yes. Back when I had no sense. So <laughs> you, you know, you're lucky if you get out of it alive or not, a, you know, arrested or something. <laughs> but one of these times we went out with our usual array of morons. And the moron who knew how to get to the subway station while drunk was not with us. But we didn't calculate <laughs> that until after we got out of the bar at 2 a.m. And we go, hey. Does anybody know how to get to the subway? Huh? <laughs> and it was literally like two blocks. It was like right around the corner. But we were all so drunk, so plastered that we we're like, oh, yeah, I have no idea. So we're like, I know. We'll just walk to the hotel. We're in some hostel like, I don't know, 26 blocks away or something. And that's a long walk when you're totally blitzed and it's, you know, 2 a.m. in New York. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Short story, or long story short, we went up the block and ran into some people that were, you know, in a similar state that we were, but they were a little bit more aggressive. And, you know, we had a little rough and tumble with them, but not really a fight, just kind of like, well, just enough to sober you up a little bit. Drunk people and, fights. Uh, yeah, exactly. Hey, man, you, <laughs> you want to talk to me? I will totally. I love you, man. Come here. Absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, that sobered us up a little bit. And as we were doing the traditional pee in the alley after almost having a fight while drunk, you know, I came up with a great idea of picking up a length of wood. There was a two by four, also known as a length of wood for our foreign listeners, uh, two inches by four inches at the uh, base of the wood. The length of the wood may vary. This one was probably about, I don't know. Four feet, maybe five. Pretty big piece of wood we found in the alley. And I said, hey, 
we've got to protect ourselves. I'm going to pick this up. So I picked up a length of wood like that, put it on my shoulder, and started walking down Broadway. I see Broadway. where this is going now. I see it. I see it In coming, and I like it. And did so for several blocks, and we were wondering why people kept crossing the street away from us <laughs> while we were walking down the street. We're like, yeah, we're bad men. So we get to the hostel at the end, and the doorman says, excuse me, sir, uh, you're going to have to put that down, or you can't come in. And I realized I had a big ass piece of wood on my shoulder. I go, oh, okay, thanks, man. And the bottom line is, if you watch wrestling back in the day, there was a guy named Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and his trademark was the American flag on one shoulder and a big old two by four on the other. So that's where I got the nickname Hacksaw from. And, of and course, it has pretty much stuck. Of course, you got to do the Hacksaw scream. Ah! Oh! <laughs> yeah, he was a big old. <laughs> Redneck, it uh, doesn't really fit me personality-wise, but from a perspective of what happened that night, I was Hacksaw. That, that's the greatest story ever. I love Hacksaw Jim Duggan, man, and I love you because mm -hmm. of that story. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's a good nickname. Could Absolutely. be worse. It could be worse. It could, I mean, we, we won't need to talk about what it could be. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I can kind of predict the outcome of this next question. This one's going to be... What sort of things are going to take up your free time besides gaming? I know you're a family man. That oh, yeah. may be a hint to what mm -hmm. we're about to hear about. Yeah, so currently I'm working uh, in one location during the week uh, down at Marshall Space Flight Center for NASA. And then on the weekends, I'm going home to Tennessee where my family is. My wife's finishing up her uh, PhD in mathematics. So basically I work all week. In the evenings, I'm just – you know, alone here doing my thing on the laptop. So that's the gaming part. And when I get home on the weekends, uh, basically it's just family time. So, you know, do the dishes, do the laundry, spend time with the kiddos, you know, cuddle up with the wife and the dog, all that good stuff. So my schedule is basically, you know, work, come home, game, go home on the weekend, do family stuff, have fun. And it's a full, full regimented schedule seven days a week. Well, now it makes more sense. You were mentioning how, you know, when you were in the PPL the last season, wifey was getting a little bit uh, disgruntled <laughs> there for a while. And now it oh, makes yeah. total sense because that happens on the weekends. And mm -hmm. that's that's wifey time. Oh, yeah. Into. Yeah, I got the uh, – every time I reminded her about the, the league games, I go, you know, remember, we'll get this league game tonight. So I'm going to have a little bit of time, just a little bit, where I'm going to be upstairs in the computer room, okay? And she goes – fine oh no oh yeah so you oh, know no. when you hear that fateful word fine it doesn't matter if it's this is just a pro tip to the male gamers out there and it may not have been much experience as i have when your girlfriend or your wife or any other significant other says fine that doesn't mean fine it means <laughs> so enjoy that it's just a little wisdom from me Absolutely, you. yeah. Pay attention. Seriously, <laughs> that's oh, something else. We love, uh, we love it, man. We love it. <laughs> but the, you know, it's it's that's the beautiful part about it, you know, balancing act. And uh, oh, yeah. so now, as far as the gaming goes in the uh -huh. PPL, you guys had a really successful first season as a team and kind of a rocky second season. You know, when the losses started coming, what did you do personally to kind of try to bounce back or motivate your team as the team captain? Uh, I've talked about this a couple of times in interviews towards the end of the season. Essentially, uh, we kind of knew what was going on. We figured it out halfway through the season that we had not been very focused on how our team was going to function. Uh, we were very tentative on how the lineup was going to look once the subs got introduced as a possibility. We kind of didn't realize after we had our subs established what was going to be the mechanism for determining who played when, et cetera, et cetera. So there was a lot of uncertainty in the first half of the season. Um, and that kind of led us to be unfocused. A lot of the games we didn't even have an idea of how we were going to draft or who was going to play what. We didn't even really have roles 
fully established, although we kind of fell into those roles anyway every time. Um, so we ended up having a lot of losses that we thought were just based on lack of communication due to that problem. And um, once that started happening, we kind of had a, a meeting one week and we said, look, we're just going to stick with our starting lineup. Uh, these are the roles and we're going to focus on doing X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, unfortunately at that point we were in the kind of a toughest set of opponents. We had switched to Sunday, uh, and there was a lot of tough teams. So we're playing catch up and, you know, we didn't do anything specifically beyond just getting ourselves organizing, uh, having a plan. And, um, once we started to do that on a more consistent basis, we began to execute well at the end of the season. Uh, I think we uh, split a series with 2OP, uh, which was a good step up from what we had been experiencing. And then we, I think we swept all our games in the last week. So uh, that was great. And, you know, we're, we're ready to do what we need to do. I've already been in discussions with the guys <clears throat> a little bit about the changes that we're going to implement before the next season begins. We're actually going to try to practice. Um, you know, we're just a fun loving bunch of guys. So normally if we run into each other, we'll group up and just mostly troll people. <laughs> <laughs> like we don't, we don't even want to play seriously. Most of the time we're just like, ah, let's play this mini game, this game where we just only attack this one person. <laughs> I think you've experienced a little bit of that um... somewhere. Perhaps. You might have seen that. Perhaps. But anyway, it's a fun <laughs> little mini game that we like to play. But um, we're talking about, you know, actually having a few days a week where we try to play together and play seriously for a couple hours. Um, we're actually discussing, you know, some concepts um, formally that we haven't ever really discussed before. Um, you know, opening moves, priority of targets, and, you know, just specifically talking about, hey, what about mods? You know, let's talk about mods and how they combo well together. Let's do the analysis. Let's do the math on things, uh, which is something we never really did before. So uh, I imagine that we will probably feel better and feel more confident going into this next season. And usually, uh, in my experience, that will re result in better outcomes. So that's the it plan. Should. A little bit of an evolution with just shooting there going on. So like yeah. to hear that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, as a team captain, I mean, two seasons of competitive Atlas Reactor so far under your belt. What made you originally want to even get into competitive play with Atlas? Uh, and a lot of people will recognize this as new players come into the game. They will have a few phases of development. So the first phase is, uh, what do I do here? I don't know. Yeah, what is this? Oh, What's going on? Works. Exactly. So you're going to have a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, depending on your mileage, of what the hell am I doing? And then once the lights turn on, you go, oh, okay, I think I understand. And you watch a few games of people who know what they're doing, and you start talking about concepts, and then you try to apply those concepts in a pub, and you're like, what the hell are my teammates doing? <laughs> These guys are morons. <laughs> so... That's just the nature of a team game. Everybody's in a different phase of their evolution. Yeah. And if you don't link up with the right people, you're going to have a bad time. So uh, that happened to me after, you know, probably a month and a half, two months. And I was looking at the game and going, you know, I really got to group up with some people. I just don't, this is really killing me here. And so we started grouping up with a variety of people, uh, you know, the core members of Just Shoot'em have been there. And then a variety of other folks that are, in the competitive circle or semi-competitive that aren't on teams but are just good players. And <clears throat> once you start doing that, you realize the depth of gameplay in this game. So I'd really advocate for people to do that. If you haven't already done so, jump into a group and just start talking about stuff. Talking about what you're going to do on a turn. Talking about what just happened. And you'll eventually start to realize there's a lot of stuff going on. You can learn a ton of things uh, just by grouping up and talking about the game. So that started to happen. And as I began to appreciate that, I said, look, let's get this team together. And I don't know who it was going to be, but I wanted to get a team together. And, you know, they're going, hey, there's this tournament. Let's let's do this tournament. And maybe we'll learn some more stuff, you know. And it just happened. And, you know, I have um, a lot of leadership experience in my past. I was in the Army for nine years. So I was an officer in air defense artillery. I've got plenty of, plenty of leadership experience. I've been a manager 
in various jobs. So when it comes down to the brass tacks of what a captain does in AR, in my opinion, it's really just kind of wrangling people, getting them to sign up for something, whether it be an event, a practice, uh, talking about a concept, putting some data down. Um, and that's really what a captain does. Also, I think the job of the captain is just to keep the team motivated. you got to have a positive outlook. Uh, I am a very much a no-flame type person. If any of my team members are using bad manners in a game or in a public match, I will require them, dad voice on, to apologize because that's not who we are. And there's no need for drama. There's a lot of drama that goes on in electronic gaming. Because a lot of guys and girls are just immature. You know, they're young. They haven't had the experience uh, in social settings where they know how to react to certain things. And if you invest a lot of energy in a game and you have a bad outcome or a bad day, you know, the tendency of somebody who hasn't had the um, social experience to suck it up, take a deep breath, say good game and move on, they need that leadership figure to tell them, hey, this is not a big deal. This is just a game. We'll move on. We'll get better. Say good game. We got it. That's it. So I am willing to share that knowledge. I'm willing to invest the emotional energy to to guide the young Padawans towards the path of good gaming. Well, I definitely like that explanation because it reminds me of, you know, back when I was a little kid, probably yourself too, playing sports, you know, just like a Little League or something. You get stomped. You still got to line up and shake their hands and say good game, you know. Exactly. Yep. It's just how it was back in the day. I don't know how they do it now. My daughter's just now getting to the point where she can get into stuff like that. But uh, I mean, at this point, I think a lot of kids have just missed out on that, and just like you said, may have may just lack that experience in dealing with those situations. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and especially in a game like AR, which has complexity that is not clearly visible to novice players you will if you keep that positive attitude and you keep playing and you keep learning you will eventually get beaten by good players and you will actually feel like they deserve a good game you'll go that was a good move yeah i just learned something or they outplayed me and you'll feel good about saying good game you will not be mad you will not flame if you keep the right attitude you will have learned something you make a mental note that you know baby millie always moves on this path when he's a son on Ebos. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> so you will learn something and you will actually want to say good game. And you'll go, I got that. Okay, good. I learned something today. And I do see that in this community more than any other. I, I have to admit, I mean, even today I was playing a few games and like we were just completely destroying this other team, just a pub game. I was in a pre-made and they probably weren't, you know, unfortunate as it is with matchmaking, but we pulled off one of those helio wall combos, mm -hmm. black hole wall combos, and somebody on the enemy team hit all chat and said, man, that was great. Good job. You know, what oh, a yeah. wall. And, you know, you don't see that really in so many other, like you said, electronic games like in any of the other ones going on. But the community here just blows me away all the time. You have mm -hmm. some bad eggs, but most of them are just on the up and up, and I love it. Yeah, I agree. And <clears throat> on that note, I would also say to folks – who may not have experienced the salt from League or Dota or other more hmm, volatile communities, I'll say. Uh, do not be afraid at the first sign of flame, at the first sign of negativity, to just block a player. Yeah. Because if they start saying stuff negative and you're just shocked by it, you're like, wow, that was... Huh, I mean, is that guy having a bad day? No, the the uh, most likely thing is they are just a flamer. They will be like that regardless. In the best case, they're having a good game and they won't say anything. But in the worst case, they're going to flame and they're going to blame and they're going to do whatever. So I highly advocate for people, if you're getting into this game and you see folks like that, just block them immediately. There is no sense trying to reason with them. Do not engage with them. They just want you to engage with them. That's why they're just trying to vent. They have either got a, just a bad attitude in general, or maybe they're having a bad day, but just block them. You're playing a game to have fun. You're playing a game to learn. Don't need to deal with that. Just put it away. Would it be nice in real life if you could just turn a mute button on? Like if you had a <laughs> hearing aid, that you could just boop, 
and like you could just have that guy in front of you with the red face and waving arms and you just didn't hear him and you could just smile and be like yeah yeah <laughs> that'd be great that'd but be anyway amazing. so i do recommend that to everybody so we we touched on this a lot just in the last couple of uh back and forth we have but what advice as a veteran player would you give to somebody who may be just now downloading Atlas Reactor for the first time? Uh, I would say the game is very good. There's a lot to learn in all those phases of evolution of learning that we talked about. I think the best thing that you can do is jump on the Discord server and start asking questions. You'll find a lot of help there. You'll find people that are willing to even just group up with you and walk you through the game. I've been very surprised myself uh, to see, you know, somebody that I know. And I'm like, hey, you got a spot? And we'll jump in. They'll go, yeah, just be aware. I've got a new player with me and I'm teaching them how to play. And that's something that people are willing to do because they want the game to grow. So just jump on Discord. Say, hey, I'm new. Can somebody group up? You will learn so much faster by being in the game and having that immediate interaction with somebody who knows what they're doing, just even if it's just using basic mechanics of how the inputs uh, go for movement and attacks and all that kinds of stuff, you know, your mileage may vary what you're worried about, but I highly, highly recommend just jumping in with somebody. And even if you don't um, feel like you want to be in voice, if you're not comfortable with that, you can just type and you can be in a Discord channel and still still hear the uh, people talking as well. We had, um, you know, Saber on our team. He didn't have a mic um, until probably three four months ago. Maybe it wasn't that long. Maybe a couple months ago. Um, but he would be in the in the channel listening to us talk about what we're doing, yada yada yada, and he'd acknowledge in chat. So there's a lot of different options, but I'd say it is a good community for just. You know, being able to jump in with somebody and learn the game quickly. So that's what I would recommend. I would agree entirely. Absolutely. So before we wrap everything up, Hacksaw, what would you like to say to your fans or maybe the fans of Just Shoot'em on our way out? Well, you know, we have a lot of people coming into the game right now. Uh, be out there. Be open arms talking to them about the game. If they have concerns, just shoot them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. You always drop it on my head at the last second. That's great. So, Hacksaw, it's been fun. It's been exciting. I learned a lot about you. Hopefully, everybody at home likes what they saw here. Got to know one of the competitive players in Atlas Reactor. We're going to kind of go out to some music here. So, if you want to do a little jam with me, oh, I think we might be able to do that. All right. What do we got? Let's see if this matches up. <laughs> Oh, here's that beat. Uh, is that right? I can't oh, yeah. tell. That's good. Uh, yeah, I got it. Hey, everybody. Thanks for dropping by for episode number four, when our priority target was, of course, Hacksaw, when the team just shoot him. Competitive player in Atlas Reactor and a lot of fun to talk to. Now, you can see my social media on the left side of your screen, and Hacksaw has a website he would love for you to visit called CaptainCon.com. And definitely go check that out. We'll see you next week, hopefully on a Monday once again, and get back on schedule. And, hey, it's been my pleasure. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time. Hello and I'll welcome. I'll try not to throw up. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm good. Good? Yeah, I'm good. good. All right, we're good. All right, let's Hello. do this. <laughs> This is the way to break the ice. Come on. <laughs> now you go ahead. Go now ahead. I got a nice little blooper reel. Go, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I'm scared. You know, I can't. <laughs> <laughs>